Hey, John from Mighty here. And in this video, we're gonna walk through how you can modify the menu that's built into an Articulate Rise course. A lot of times I see in the forum where people have either some text colors that they wish were changed up slightly or where font sizes are in general a little bit too small based on their audience. And they wanna be able to customize exactly what that could look like, but they've got no real controls to do that. So I'm gonna show you while using some CSS how you could go about updating some of that style. So let's jump in. All right, so as we dive into this course, let me show you exactly what we're talking about with the menu. So if I jump into my first lesson, you'll see that we're using the sidebar navigation menu. And in here, there's a couple of things that you'll notice right out of the gate. One is that my font color or my text color is white and I actually don't want that to be white. I would prefer that in this situation here for it to be more of a dark color that matches my text color that's down here. As well as these lesson um, header titles are just a little bit too small and we've got users who are using this course who would prefer that these be larger from an accessibility perspective. So there's a couple of ways that you could easily go about updating that just using some CSS. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how you do that. First is what we'll do is we'll right click on the text that we want to update. You'll go to the inspect window and this will open up your inspect window, which allows you to mess with all sorts of fun CSS. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create an override for the color on this element here. So the easiest way to do that is to just click this plus icon, which is going to create us our own inspector style sheet that we'll be able to go and grab all the styles for. And now that we've got this element here, what we're talking about doing is just updating the color and we're just gonna update it to like a black hex color. Now you'll notice over here on the left as we're looking at the course, it did not actually change anything. And the reason that it didn't change anything is because we already have a color being set by Rise built in and the way that it sets this color is higher precedented than my color setting, meaning that there's more specificity here that calls out this element than what mine does. Mine just calls out any link element that uses this class. And this one says any class that's nested inside of this classic div. So all we have to do is go to ours and we just put in a classic uh, class before our element. And because we have the element name called out as the A tag, you'll see right here, this is automatically updating to decide based on precedence where this shows. So now you'll see that my color actually did change to more of that darker black color. So that's one thing you'll have to be aware of when you're dealing with some of these CSS classes. Now the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna mess around with this progress bar. So in here, you can actually go into this progress thing or again, just right click on it, hit inspect, It'll automatically take you to that element. And very similarly, we're just actually gonna copy this this time. And then we can start to mess with the color again here. So we'll again, make this more of that black color. And as you'll see, automatically updated because from a precedent perspective, it is actually the same, but it is uh, in the order of what's displayed. It was actually the last included. So just in case, I'm actually going to add that A meaning the link element, to make it a higher priority regardless. Oh wait, actually that's not a, oops, hold on. That was not a um, link. That is actually, I think it was just in a div. Let's go back to that. Yep, so that's just in a div. So you'll see now that that shows back up because again, the element that we're a part of, cool. Now we've also got this progress bar. Progress bar is super difficult to see. This background color that's being set here is a little bit uh, light. And so, and, and it's actually a, using a CSS variable. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click into this icon here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and change this to be a little bit of like a darker color. So that's gonna give us this HSL color in which we can just copy this whole background color part. And again, hit this plus icon, add the dot classic, and then paste in that background color that we just set up. 
So now this is gonna be more of like a grayish color. And then as we make progress on our course, you'll see now there's a white color that comes into play. So let's go back into there. And maybe I actually wanna make that more of a black color. So we've got this div here. And inside of this div is where that actual progress runner is the class that they called is what they're using. And so again, in here, we're just gonna change this background color to be more of a dark, uh, maybe something more like that. Like that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and copy this background color, create a class for this and paste that in. Cool. So now let's go ahead and try this out. I'll jump over to the next item, make progress on that and perfect. Everything looks really, really good here. So now before I lose any of that, because as soon as you refresh the page, all of that custom CSS that you've written would go away. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna show you exactly where to store this information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna publish this course. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this for web. And once we've got a published course available, I will show you where to put this in for your custom CSS. All right, so the file is downloaded and I've opened this code up in VS Code, which is a code editing tool that you can use. And in here, we've got this index.html file. And what you'll want to do is just at the bottom of this, before this body tag ends, we're just going to add a style tag. And inside of the style tag, we can just paste in that style that we copied over from that inspect um, area. So then we've got this saved. We can just open up the content inside of this folder, this index.html file. And you'll see here that as soon as we go into the navigation, all of that CSS style that we've added is automatically applied. And as we make progress on this lesson, you'll see that the progress bar looks way better than it did before with that light contrast that was happening. So again, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna go into this folder, open up this index.html file in any sort of code editing tool, and then just at the bottom of your body, add this style tag. And that will just ensure that it's kind of like the last CSS properties being added. You may have to add important to some of these in case if you're getting some weird overrides and you don't wanna to have to figure out how CSS precedent is determined. So now next steps are increasing the font size of these lesson items. So again, very similar to what we just did. We're actually gonna go back into Rise, preview this course, and right click on this lesson, hit inspect, and this will tell you exactly what the class is used for that. And in here, you could kind of look around and see exactly what it's setting the font size to. This looks like 1.3 rem, which is actually 13 pixels. You could also look at the computed uh, font size for this, and it will tell you exactly what that's computed out into pixels as well. So what we need to do is we need to override this to be something larger, maybe more like a 16 pixels. So again, we're gonna go and hit this plus button and we're not gonna worry about the active link. Um, we wanna make sure that this same idea gets applied to all of these navigation items. So maybe I'll leave this as is just to show you what this would end up doing and then we'll fix this here in a second. So. As you'll see, I've updated font size to be 16 pixels. And look, it only updated one of them. And that is again, because I started to call out the fact that this is indicating just for active nav items versus these other ones that have just a general list item, but not this active part. So we can go ahead and get rid of this active information and just have it be this outline and then it looks like the last thing that you'll need to do is get rid of the element itself because sometimes it's either just a div or a link depending on if it is clickable based on your navigation being restricted or not. So you can go ahead and get rid of that. And now you'll see that all of our um, lesson titles are now 16 pixels instead of 13. So once you've got that, very similarly, you'll go back into that inspect window 
grab that change part of the style sheet and then just put that inside of your style section that you've got. Now, if you wanna keep track of all of this, what you could certainly do is have all of this custom CSS in a CSS file that maybe you just keep somewhere on your computer or you share amongst your other team members who publish this course. And then what you would do is you could either just drag that into this folder here and then up at the top of the index.html file, just create like a new external link similar to this or a new external style sheet. Similar to this, referencing that custom CSS file where maybe you customize a bunch of various CSS properties. So that's how you could manage that, which does work. But the reason or one of the many reasons why we've created Mighty was to actually manage a lot of this for you and help kind of alleviate some of this concern of dealing with actual development work and how do you deal with post download or post publishes scripts and making sure that you get all this appended CSS and it's just a lot of work and it definitely gets more and more scary the more things that we're asking you to do. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to install a mighty Chrome extension which allows you to add all that CSS directly in Rise. So that way you can see it during preview and when you publish it, it's automatically there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to the Chrome Web Store and we are going to install Mighty Chrome extension. And then we're gonna go back into Rise and reload the page and you're gonna see that there is a Mighty logo down here at the bottom right hand. This is our Mighty Assistant. And you'll wanna go ahead and create an account and log in. And once you log in, you'll have new features available to you in Rise. And the first thing that you'll be able to do specifically for this feature is take all of that custom CSS that you've written and under the theme tab, there's now a new custom code section. And you can take all of that CSS and apply that immediately into your course and make that available. So we'll go ahead and save all of that. So here's our custom code, we'll hit save. And now that that's saved, we will go back to previewing the course. And now what you'll see during preview is all of that CSS as well being applied. So you don't have to wait for it to be from a publishing perspective, you'd be able to preview that information. And then we can publish our course, again for web, You'll notice now there's a different, slightly different publishing process, and this will get you a zip file that has all the CSS built into it. And once that zip is downloaded, go ahead and open up your index.html file and jump into your lesson, and you'll notice that all of your CSS is automatically applied. So you don't have to actually keep track of a CSS file, and you don't have to remember to add that in after you publish your course. It'll all be here available, so that way anytime you publish your course, for whoever's publishing your course, as long as they're using the Mighty extension, you're good to go. Hey, here's some bonus content that I wanted to show you real quick. So while we were walking through all of this, you may have noticed that Rise uses some CSS variables throughout their course. And that is what this color nav sidebar contrast is. And what that does is that actually allows us to automatically update several areas that use that CSS variable throughout all of their CSS. And so if we just take some of the CSS here and let's go ahead and remove our overrides and hit run on this, you'll see everything kind of reverted back. But then if I just go to these CSS variables and I update this color, you'll notice that it updated several things as well as we've got this uh, sidebar progress track and we can update this as well. So that'll basically get us back to where we were with our color changes without having to call out those specific CSS selector elements. We can actually just update the CSS variables and just like that, get everything updated the way we want without having to rely on the CSS selectors, just rely on something more reliable like the CSS variables. Thanks.